In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the thoracic and lumbar spine. Now, there are many different positions we can perform this technique in, but for this example, we're going to be performing it in a seated position. So as I'm working through the technique, I'm going to be putting my hands on a few different places in your back. I'm also going to be asking you to position your arms in a few different positions, and then I'm going to be moving you throughout the technique. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Let me know if at any point it's tender or uh, if you're uncomfortable and you need me to stop, okay? All right. So if you could, just turn around. All right. So I pre-diagnosed my patient, and we're going to begin with an example between T1 and T4. Our diagnosis is T3, extended, rotated left, side bent left. Now, similar to uh, diagnosis for the upper thoracic spine, we're going to be utilizing the head to position our segment into the restricted barrier. So first, let's find our landmarks. We're going to start with the spine of the scapula, trace it medially, and then find the spinous process of T3. Then we're going to come directly lateral until we find the transverse processes. And we're going to confirm our rotation to the left. Perfect. So now we're going to take our left hand and we're going to make contact with those transverse processes. We could either use our index finger and thumb or we can use our middle finger and thumb. I prefer middle finger and thumb. And then we're going to take our other hand and we're going to place it on the top of the head. Now I'm going to stand on the right side because uh, since our diagnosis is uh, rotated to the left and side bent to the left, I want to position myself so that I can easily position uh, that segment in side bending and rotation to the right. Again, our diagnosis is extension, rotation to the left, and side bending to the left. So we're going to place our head on top, and then we're going to position that segment into its restricted barriers. So we're going to flex the head, and we're just going to flex it just enough until we feel motion at the segment that we're treating. Then we're going to side bend to the right, just until we feel motion at T3, and then rotation to the right, just until we feel motion. So now that we've engaged all of those restricted barriers, we're going to have our patient move towards their freedoms of motion, and we're going to provide an isometric resistance. It's important that we give clear instructions so that our patient uh, engages their freedoms uh, in a way that can be effective. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your left ear and bring it to your left shoulder and also turn your head to the left and try to bring your head up straight. Okay, go ahead. And we want to make sure that our patient's applying no more than one to two pounds of force. We're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then we'll ask our patient to relax. Go ahead and relax. Once they relax, we're also going to relax and maintain this position for another one to two seconds. After those one to two seconds, we'll begin to feel a little bit of relaxation at the segment. And then we can advance to the next restricted barrier with a little additional flexion, side bending to the right, and rotation to the right just until we begin to feel motion at T3. So go ahead and turn to the left and bring your left ear to your left shoulder. Go ahead. We provide isometric resistance. We want to make sure our hand is in a good position so that we can provide that resistance without uh, putting too much pressure on the head. And then after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. Go ahead and relax. We relax with them. We wait one to two seconds and then we advance to the next restricted barrier with a little additional flexion just until we feel motion, side bending, and then rotation until we feel motion at T3. And then go ahead and bend your head to the left and turn your head to the left. Good, we provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. We repeat these cycles for a total of three to five times. We've now completed our third time, so we're gonna end here. So go ahead and relax. After that last time, we're gonna add a passive stretch as an optional step with a little bit of additional side bending and rotation. Then we'll bring our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. So we're coming back to spine of the scapula, T3 spinous process, and the lateral to T3 transverse processes, and that does appear to be more symmetric. Our next example is gonna be a segment below T4, and it's gonna be a diagnosis of T8 neutral rotated left side bent right. So now, with the neutral dysfunction, we're going to be using a slightly different arm position so that we can provide isometric resistance. So first, let's find our landmarks. We're going to come to the inferior angle of the scapula, then moving medial, we'll find the spinous process of T7. Directly lateral from the spinous process of T7, we'll find the transverse processes of T8. And again, we'll confirm that we have our rotation to the left. So now we're going to position our fingers on those transverse processes to monitor for motion. 
Now with this segment being in a neutral position, we don't want to induce uh, much extension or flexion. We really want to make sure that we're maintaining our patient in a neutral position. We're also going to want to position our patient towards their, their restricted barriers with side bending to the left and rotation to the right. So again, I'm going to stand on the right side so I can easily rotate them to the right and then I'm going to ask them to position their arms so that I can provide a good isometric resistance. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your left arm or your left hand and tuck it behind your neck. Just grab your neck. Good. And then I'd like you to take this right arm or right hand and grab your elbow. Perfect. So now from this position, we're going to take our free arm and swing it under their right arm and then tuck our hand just above their upper arm, just above their bicep. So now from this position, we will be able to easily induce side bending to the left by driving our arm down and also rotation to the right by going ahead and standing behind our patient. So because of this arm positioning, this will be a lot more intuitive as we just stand behind our patient and we'll be inducing side bending and rotation just until we feel motion at that segment. So now, now that we've achieved our restricted barrier, without much flexion or extension, and really maintaining that neutral position, we're gonna ask our patient to engage their freedoms of motion. So go ahead and sit up straight, turning to your left and bending to your right. Okay, go ahead. And we're gonna provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds, which is relatively easy because of these arm positions. And then go ahead and relax. We're gonna pause for one to two seconds. And as we begin to feel relaxation at that segment, we're gonna advance to the next restricted barrier. A little bit of additional side bending to the left, rotation to the right, while maintaining our relatively neutral position. So go ahead and turn to the left again and bend to the right. Good. We're gonna to continue to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then have our patient relax. Go ahead and relax, good. We're gonna wait one to two seconds and then advance to the next restricted barrier with a little bit of additional side bending to the left and rotation to the right, just until we feel motion. So go ahead and turn to the left again and bend to the right. We hold this for three to five seconds and then we ask our patient to relax. And after a total of three to five times, we're going to add an optional passive stretch and then we can return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. So again, coming to the inferior angle of the scapula, moving to uh, T7 spinous process, then moving lateral to T8 transverse processes, we can see that that's a bit more symmetric. So now our final example is going to be uh, in the lumbar spine, but we can use this position for any segment that is a non-neutral segment. Our example is gonna be L2 flexed, rotated left and side bent left. So we're gonna begin by finding our landmarks. So hands on iliac crest, thumb comes to the midline, finds L4 spinous process, then we can move up two spinous processes to L2 spinous process, and then directly lateral, we'll find the L2 transverse processes. And we can again confirm that we have some rotation to the left. We're gonna position our fingers on the transverse processes of that segment. Now this time, because we have a non-neutral segment, we're gonna to want to rotate and side bend to the same direction. So again, I'm gonna stand on this right side so that I can easily rotate my patient to the right. Um, but this time I wanna side bend my patient to the right as well. So what I'm gonna ask my patient to do is take their right hand and put it on your left shoulder. Good. So as they're doing this, they're providing um, some coverage of their chest area, uh, which is very important for female patients. And they're also providing a sturdy contact that we can use uh, to provide isometric resistance. So now, if our patient is far enough back, we can just stand behind them or we can sit alongside them. So again, contacting our segment. And then we're gonna wrap our arm around our patient with our hand over their hand. And then we're gonna take our axilla and put it on top of their shoulder. So now from this position, we can easily side bend and then rotate to the right. Because we have a flex segment at L2, we also wanna make sure that we extend. So we're gonna take our contact here and just gently ask our patient to sit up straight. Go ahead and sit up straight. Then using our contact at the transverse processes as a fulcrum, we're gonna lightly extend our patient right around that L2. Then from there, we're gonna drop our axilla onto their shoulder and then rotate them to the right until we meet the restricted barrier. So now that we're at the restricted barrier, we're gonna ask our patient to reverse those directions towards their freedoms of motion. 
So go ahead and sit up straight, turning to the left and also bending to the left. Go ahead and sit up straight. Sit up straight. So we provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then go ahead and relax. So when they relax, we relax as well. We pause at the same position for one to two seconds. And as we feel relaxation at the segment, we're gonna to advance to the next restricted barrier. So we can add a little bit of additional extension, a little bit of side bending to the right and rotation to the right until we meet the restricted barrier. So go ahead and sit up straight, turn to the left, bend to the left, go ahead. We provide isometric resistance, which is relatively easy because of our arm positions. And then go ahead and relax. We're gonna pause again for one to two seconds. And then we're gonna to advance to the next restricted barrier with a little bit of side bending to the right, rotation to the right, a little bit of extension. Go ahead and one more time, uh, sit up straight and turn to the left, side bend to the left. Good. And after three to five seconds, we can ask, ask our patient to relax. And then now that we've completed at least three rounds of this technique, we can then add an optional passive stretch through the barrier. Then return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction. So now again, coming to iliac crest, moving medial to L4 spinous process, then up two segments to L2, then lateral to the transverse processes, we can see that we have a bit of improved symmetry at L2.